Fred, let's get into this. North Korea, they've now launched four missiles into the Sea of Japan over the last 17 days. The Biden administration is planning a series of sanctions. But I want to start with comments from our Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. Take a listen, then we'll get some reaction. Some months ago, we made clear that we were prepared to, uh, to engage the North Koreans to sit down with no preconditions to see if we could find a way forward with them uh, at the table uh, toward the total denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Uh, we've made clear that we have no hostile intent uh, toward North Korea, uh, and we've waited to see if they uh, are prepared to engage. What, what do you make of those comments? They seem pretty passive to me, almost a wait-and-see approach. I, I think that's right. I mean, experts I know who are looking at this believe that the Biden administration has really done nothing to engage the North Koreans to try to hold talks, to try to schedule talks. And it's very interesting that after a six-month delay, the North Koreans resumed testing missiles last October. And I think that's interesting because it came right after the Afghanistan debacle. Right. I think the North Korean leadership sees weakness in this administration. It sees an opportunity to obtain concessions. And that's when it starts launching missiles. What do you make of the uptick? This is pretty unusual, this uptick in the frequency of these tests by Kim Jong-un and the regime there in North Korea. Well, they stopped testing missiles in 2018 because of Donald Trump. They resumed right. in mid-2019 because they were irritated that Trump wouldn't make any concessions. They're actually getting back into their normal routine of large numbers of missile tests that it did during the Obama administration and the first year of the Trump administration. So it seems unusual right now, but this is sort of something the North Koreans try to do to get attention and to get the world to make concessions to them. Fred, I want to pivot now to the developing situation between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, the Wall Street Journal had an interesting piece over the weekend that suggested that Vladimir Putin does things like this, you know, this troop buildup in Ukraine, to, quote, bolster his standing in Russia, both politically and with Russian people. Uh, what do you make of that? And, and could that be an angle to what we're seeing at the Ukraine-Russian border? You know, I'm glad you said that, Rob, because on Friday it sounded like they were just about to invade and that there's this intelligence that they're trying to instigate trouble as an example, uh, uh, I mean, an excuse to invade. I think that there are many reasons Putin's doing this. There are domestic reasons to, to bolster himself at home. I also think that this troop buildup is to intimidate NATO and the U.S. to get concessions. I'm not sure Putin wants to pay the price of an invasion of Ukraine. I think there's other reasons behind this. All right, we're going to have more on that story coming up in just a moment. Fred Flights, great to see you again. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll have you back soon. Good to be here.